Hello friends, in this video we will explore how the single cell technology works. So in the last session we talked about the difference between bulk RNA sequencing versus single cell RNA sequencing. We also explored the different applications of single cell technology field. So in this video we will explore the how this technology works. Okay. So uh, to give you an overview, uh, let's say this is a tissue. So the first step is like you have to isolate cell and separate you know each cell separately so that is what uh, the first step is like you have to isolate and sequence individual cells separately and once you have the sequence you obtain it then you do the same like you know reference mapping basically align the reads against the uh, individual genome but uh, the, uh, each cell will be separately you have to align so that way ultimately you get a matrix kind of thing the read count matrix so where let's say each column is equal to one cell and each row corresponds to each gene and the count is nothing but the number of reads supporting that particular you know, gene. For example, in this case, let's say there are 18 reads that supports the expression of the gene 1 in that cell 1. Similarly, cell 2, you know, that gene is not detected. In case of gene 2, you know, the count is 10, 10 here, 5, 0, 6 is the count in the cell 2. So like that number of columns will be same as the number of cells you capture. So let's say 100 cell is captured then 100 columns will be there. So this is the ultimate data what we get and later on we use this data to do the downstream processing like normalization and another you know <clears throat> analysis we do and do the you know subtyping like how uh, each you know different subtypes are there in the tissue we study that. So this is the you know overview brief you know uh, overview where you extract the cell and uh, you know extract the RNA from each cell then sequence them separately then you finally do the abundance you know you count how many uh, do the cell counting sorry gene counting in each cell then you do the downstream analysis okay so now um, if we go for the detail so the steps are like you first capture the cell so once you have captured the cell then in the next step that means you have to break the cell isolate the rna and prepare it okay so that prepare it for the sequencing in the third step so extract separate the cell extract rna and then you sequence it so the sequencing data what you get you know in the next step we convert that into the fast queue format where you the fast queue stores both sequence as well as the quality information and in the next step we use the fast queue to generate this ultimate the count matrix where each column will be the cell and each row will be the gene and the value will be the the count or how many reads supporting that genes you know abundance and later on this is the we take this count matrix and do further pre-processing and the downstream analysis so the first three you know these steps are mainly experiments basically and once you got the sequence is done all the you know steps is the downstream informatics or you know, bioinformatics analysis okay so we will see each steps in detail now so uh, this is further you know detailed view where the first step is like capturing the cell or preparing the sample then you do the sequencing and then you, you know do the processing and then you do the ultimately the analysis so we'll look into one by one so first step first how to capture the cell from the tissue so how do you break the tissue and how do you capture that we'll learn about that now okay so, uh, so this process is like let's take this uh, tissue and you first you have to di disaggregate it. Either we can uh, go by mechanical method or you know enzymatic digestion. Through that the tissue will be dissociated, you know dissolved, and you will get you know cells. Then you filter the cells such that some particular size as well as you know single cell will be you know selected. But so now after the filtering, so you got single cell. Now next step is like you have to capture that cell in a reaction chamber, you know, so that you can, so that you do such a way that each cell can be captured separately and so that in the next step the sequencing will not be mixed, you know, that way. Okay, uh, so yeah, so now this that capturing method with respect to that different technologies are, you know, available. Okay, and they differ with respect to how efficiently they capture the cell. Okay, so we'll see about the different methods by which you know we can capture the cells but this is the overview like you take the tissue you dissociate it you know digest it break it and you 
filter the cells then you capture them so uh, different approaches are there first you know the most expensive and uh, low throughput method is titer based plate based method so basically you isolate the cells into individual well of this plate either by pipetting or through you know fscs based method which is you know fluorescent activated cell sorting based method so this is a very laborious time consuming and costly uh, method and the number of cells you can capture is very less so that's why the throughput is very less so next comes is you know array based method so basically you know each of these you know array each of this well you have to trap the cell here you know this kind of you have to trap the cell for example fluidism c1 so it has higher throughput than this pico you know this tighter based method but uh, the disadvantage is like you know again it is most expensive and uh, you need more amount of you know starting material raw material okay so not suitable for low input and that's where it is not suitable for studying the ray cell type so that's where the most high throughput method is the or most popular method is the droplet based method so where you can you know capture a large amount of cell so that's where now this has highest throughput so how does it work like you know so there is a you know oil in gel emulsion will be there okay the gray one is the you know this is the oil so the oil passes through you know small uh, you know uh, small hole where so that it creates drops for example how in a tap water right if you slowly you know open your tap small drops will slowly uh, fall so you can control the you know uh, the knob right so that way here also you we can control that hole so that you know one one drop will form and when the drop keeps on forming what you do you first pass cell okay and along with that cell you pass a bead and each bead is different from each other so each bead will contain a unique uh, barcode okay that is generally called as the barcode so now in this image you can see in this case there are three beads are there one contains the blue barcode and this contains the yellow barcode and this bead contains the red barcode and now cells will be passed and beads will be passed so now when it forms the drop it will be done such that in a given drop one cell and one barcode will be captured so now in this particular drop you can see there is a blue cell along with the blue barcode and in this case you know the fibroblast let's say now this cell is captured with the yellow barcode so that that's way you know ultimately and uh, for example uh, and this way you can collect many cell because many drops you can uh, uh, you can can pass through this hole so that's where the throughput is very high and the cost is also low so drop seek and also 10x genomics chromium instrument is falls under this category droplet based method and yes they have millions of barcodes so that's why you can capture you know so so many cells within a drop along with the barcode okay we'll talk about mainly how the barcode works but so that's where the first step we saw that how the cells are captured so now our cell is captured in the next step what uh, you know the let's say tenex genomics what it does like it breaks the cell it extract the rna and in that rna rna molecule will bind will bind to this you know barcode okay so then the sequencing will happen so that's the second step like the preparation of the sample and then we will do the sequencing and in the cell preparation we will attach that a uh, that barcode and we will also add a um umi which is unique molecular identifier another you know unique sequence uh, to the read as a to the fragment and then we will sequence that so we'll talk about that in the next uh, will now in detail so uh, so now come to see this point so as our objective is to st study each cell separately right so you have to you attach you know unique barcode to each cell because that barcode is captured uh, in this bead right unique so that barcode and cell are in a droplet so all the rna will be linked with this particular barcode so in this example let's say there are three cells i have you know color coded it for the you know visual purpose let's say blue yellow and green one so all the rna molecule let's say 3 3 rna molecule is there in this cell and you attach you know the blue barcode for all the rna and you attach the orange barcode here and the green barcode here so this way we will know that wherever green is there those rna will be you know belonging to this green cell 
the orange barcode fragments belonging to the orange cell blue barcode belonging to the blue cell and next now so it is first step is done so we in our you know after the adapter we add the cell barcode okay which is you know generally uh, 12 base pair uh, unique sequence so now next we have to add the another thing called a UMA so unique molecular identifier so this will uniquely identify a molecule so why do we need it first of all so now you see just th uh, uh, think that you know you are sequencing is only one cell and the amount of RNA will be very less right because it's a just a single cell and the sequencing technology cannot detect the signal from small amount of RNA so that's where you need to make copies and you need to amplify it so that's where we involve the PCR amplification to give you a very you know uh, not a accurate kind of thing but still to give you an overview let's see in this example you attach a unique uh, you know uh, sequence to each fragment now you see the pink one I attached here the purple one is attached here and the red one is attached here so with this now now I know that these three fragments are actually different so now when I amplify this let's say each copy is now you know multiplied into three three times <clears throat> so now we have nine copies of the same now your Illumina sequencer can you know easily detect it because one molecule very weak signal three molecule good signal so you can detect it but now in the next next step when we do the downstream analysis so we cannot say that you know this gene is expressed uh, the total count is let's say nine right but actually the count is let's say three but uh, we, cannot, we cannot say that it is nine because ideally these are the duplicate we made it so PCR the technology because of the technology uh, you know technical artifacts because of that you know duplicate is happening so it's not the real uh, uh, you know duplicates so that's why using this information of UMA information now we can remove the duplicate okay so that's the advantage of adding the cell barcode and UMA so cell barcode means all the reads uh, which have the since the cell barcode will help us to know which cell that read come from and UMA will tell us which RNA fragment actually you know so that's why it is unique molecular identifier so now cool so we had captured the cell now and we have broken it we added the cell barcode we have added the umi and our read is ready now we will do the sequencing and the sequencing is same as the illumina based sequencing but now here the technology will now differ whether you want to sequence the entire uh, fragment rna molecule or you want to capture the five prime end or you want to capture the three prime end so with respect to that the sequencing technology are different for example uh, smart sequencing is another uh, you know technology which is mainly full length based whereas our 10x genomics that is 3 prime tag based so basically 10x genomics focuses on this 3 prime tag after capturing so basically this region will be sequenced okay so this is very important which part you are sequencing so cool so now we have done the sequencing very good now we have got the uh, fastq file with us so now the first Q file is mix of all the reads from all the cell and all UMI like that. So now we have to use this information of barcode and UMI to separate it then. Then we will do the counting. So now we will see how it works. Okay. So let's take this example. This is our first Q file. We have so many you know sequences are there and first part you know the red one this many sequence. This is a demo example. So only not 5 base pair. In reality the barcode sequence will be more it's around 12 base pair like that. Okay. So, but here you can see the color code at the first initial is the barcode, next comes the UMI and then the RNA part. So now what you do, you group, you know, bring all color together. So this is called cell barcode based demultiplexing. So basically when you do it, so now all cell specific reads will come together. So now we see that, you know, there are four cells are there and all the reads that is having starting from this barcode belonging to this cell and all the read uh, belonging starting with this green barcode will belong to the green cell like that and now we now we have the umi so in the umi you see that you know for example in this example the umi tga tg ccg and this is of the same sequence so ideally these two are the pcr duplicates so we will not consider them as two instead of that we will count them as one so this way actual the real count we will get after you doing the umi deduplication so this step first cell de cell demultiplexing use demultiplexing means you are separating out 
then UMI deduplication, where you, we are removing the duplicates uh, using the UMI information. So then finally we get the actual uh, reads. So now you do the next step where you map your reads against the reference genome. And then you count how many reads is aligning to this genome, how many reads aligning to this genome, and which cell that read belong to. And then you will get the final count. So gene 1, gene 2, gene 3 like that. And each column will contain the each cell. And each, uh, you know, this 3 to 13 is the number of reads or number of UMI, you can say. Now, uh, better not to use read here from single cell technology, uh, you know, field. So, people use molecule or people also say a number of UMI because it's not read actually, it's the UMI. Okay. So, number of UMI supporting is 3, 2, like that. And you will see many dots or 0, 0 means, uh, means like that gene is not uh, detected. So once we have this matrix, in the next step, we do the, a lot of analysis like normalization, feature selection, etc. etc. We do in the downstream analysis. So now this step from first queue to count, this is done by uh, a tool called Cell Ranger. This is provided by the 10x genomics company itself. So using Cell Ranger, we will be converting the raw first queue to uh, the count matrix. So basically, cell ranger will take your first queue file, will do cell demultiplexing, then UMI deduplication, then alignment, then quantification, and finally it will give you a matrix form. So now this output now you can feed into either Surat package for downstream analysis or in R, or you can use Python based ScanPy so to do the analysis and many other tools now you can use it. So that's where the fourth main step comes: the data analysis where we can do uh, let's say you know uh, we can do uh, like clustering to see different subtypes in it we can also do some trajectory analysis and also can identify which are the different marker that differentiate cell subtype one to you know two like that we can compare cell to cell and do the you know um what, excuse me uh, different uh, biomarker for identification we can do and lot many other analysis we can do once we have the raw data okay so that's where uh, uh, the four steps very detailed i have explained but last part i will try to show uh, uh, show you like different technologies and we can compare so on three parameters we can compare uh, how they capture the cell and which part they sequence and how much is the cell we can capture so this is a 2018 paper, old paper, but it gives you a brief overview of different, you know, technology like smart sequencing and cell sequencing. And here, for example, DropSeq and Chromium is the 10x genomics and other platforms are there and how they're isolating, whether the FACS based method or droplet based method or nanowell based method like that. And how they're, you know, synthesizing the, the RNA in a second strand and whether they are synthesizing full DNA or not and how they are adding the barcode and whether they're pulling the library or not but most important thing like how they are doing the amplification and which part of the gene they are covering whether they are full length or three prime or five prime base so you can see that you know 10x genomics chromium here is three prime base and last main this is the main parameter you know where you can say how uh, how much is the an output and how many cells you can capture and study for example the uh, smart sequencing and in you know, a cell seek the you know uh, hardly you can capture 100 cell these are the, you know, in the range of 100 and these are in the range of 1000 and these are in the higher range. But this is the older data and technology has evolved and you will see, you know, higher output in each of these, you know, technology itself. Okay. So that's all about uh, in this video. We, if I just give you an overview. So we talked about how, you know, the different steps of, uh, um, you know, single cell, how it works. Like you capture the cells using different methods and then you, so for example, in case of droplet based, you add cell barcode, UMI and sequence, then, you know, you do the, you know, opposite process like reverse process like demultiplexing, deduplication, mapping, counting to get the counting and then you do the downstream analysis. So that's all about in this video and uh, so next video, uh, we will talk about different challenges, uh, what we uh, see in the single cell data means what can go wrong, okay, not all the platform are perfect, so everything uh, not 100 percent accurate right so you see lot many mistakes and lot many challenges lot many errors in this data so we'll talk in detail about that in the next video i hope this video was uh, useful to you and if 
yes so please like it share among your network and subscribe to my channel so see you in the next video thank you bye bye